Hey everybody, John Wagdon here with Dev Central, and we're bringing you another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about traffic inspection and how to uh, how to essentially inspect all the traffic on your network. Um, and as you probably know, 80 plus percent of the of all the traffic out there on the internet today is encrypted, and that number is only going to grow. So you know, one day we'll I'm sure we'll hit 100 percent one of these days. But it's I mean it's it's 80 plus percent. So that presents a problem in and of itself. And what a lot of companies do is they just won't inspect the encrypted traffic. You know, so there's obviously issues with that. A lot of attackers will uh, use encrypted traffic to send malware and a bunch of other nefarious stuff. So you need to inspect that encrypted traffic. Um, but how do you do that? So a lot of times what, what people will do, or what organizations will do is they'll say, hey, we've got a lot of security devices or a lot of security functions that we need to use to encrypt this traffic. Uh, so you may have things, I'm just going to put a little list up here. Um, you may have things like, uh, say, a next-gen firewall, for example. Uh, you may have like a data loss prevention device. You may have like a, an IDS, IPS, uh, like an intrusion detection or prevention system. Uh, you may have a WAF that you need to, you know, to do things with. You may have uh, like an anti-malware, antivirus type uh, device, that kind of thing. So, and, and there could be there could be a whole multitude of these different security devices that you need to do, or these security functions, as it were, that you need to to use on the traffic. Um, so, as clients in your enterprise network go out to the internet, or frankly, as internet traffic comes into maybe your data center, whatever it is, traffic's flowing both ways. You need that traffic to go through these security devices so that you can inspect it and take action on it if it's bad traffic. Um, all right, so some people have talked about, hey, what if we take all of these different features and functions of all these security you know, devices and put it into like one Uber security device? So one device that rules them all kind of a thing. Um, which on the surface sounds like maybe a pretty cool idea because you know standardization is there. Uh, maybe training for employees or whatever, and it's like, okay, that's kind of that would be kind of cool. Um, but there's issues with that, and there's things that I wanted to kind of highlight today to to think about as you look to maybe move in that direction or not. Um, so one of the things that happens with some security devices, it would say, hey, we just do all this stuff, you know, in this one box. Um, what they what they typically do, or almost always do, frankly is what's called daisy chaining these devices together. And even if they're in one box, as you kind of as you kind of crack the lid, as you as you pop the hood, as it were, and look inside, uh, what's effectively happening is just each of these devices is daisy chained together inside the one big Uber device. Um, and so the problem with that is as a let's say you have a client out here uh, that is going to, you know, some kind of you know internet website out here on the cloud, you know, here's the internet out here, um, then what happens is the, the uh, traffic will go through each device individually, and if any of these devices goes down, then the entire chain will break. And so it just, the, the whole thing just doesn't work anymore, which is a problem. And so sometimes the workaround for that, some of these companies will say, hey, if, uh, you know, if one of these breaks, the whole chain goes down, why don't we create several different chains? Why don't we create several different paths? So you know, here's, here's option one that, you know, they're all up. But then let's create another option down here where you have, you know, this box uh, goes down. So then we have to have this and then this and then this and then that. But what if there's another option where this box goes down? Then you have to have this, skip that, then that, then that. So you have to build all these different chains uh, to, to, you know, consume all the different possibilities that might happen. Or what if this one and this one goes down? That's another option. So you can see the complexity of this just gets crazy uh, to try to figure out how are we gonna how are we gonna route traffic through all of our much needed security devices um, if one of them goes down with this daisy chain scenario. So uh, so that's a problem. Um, another thing, another huge issue with this is a lot of these devices, many many of them, are not built to inherently. Uh, offload SSL TLS traffic uh, just the way that they're built. They're not, you know, custom hardware built for that. And so the SSL TLS offload itself is such a computationally expensive thing to do that what companies have to do is if they're going to go with like one big Uber security device, 
instead of getting the one that could handle you know all of these functions on its own now you've got to go to you know two or three versions above that because you have to take care of the SSL TLS offload part of that and so uh, they so they basically oversize their purchases like crazy because they're trying to handle the the SSL TLS offload all right so those are some things to think about I will offer this as well uh, F5 has a uh, has a product called the SSL orchestrator and essentially what happens here is you have client traffic that comes into this uh, and then the SSL uh, orchestrator does its thing and then you have the internet out here um, and frankly these are this is two ways so SSL can handle inbound and outbound traffic um, but what this does is this orchestrates all of your SSL traffic. First of all, it's, it's custom built hardware, so it does all of that SSL TLS offload that I just talked about uh, better than frankly any other device out there. And so that handles all of the offload. So I'm gonna put a little uh, lock right here. So the traffic that comes in is encrypted and then this thing decrypts it and then it re-encrypts it uh, you know, as it goes out or frankly on the other, on the other side. So, this thing also does what's called uh, dynamic traffic steering or, or service chaining, uh, as it were. And this thing can classify traffic. So as traffic comes in or out, it can use things like IP address, geolocation, port number, you know, domain name. It uses like a whole host of factors to, to classify the traffic and say, hey, based on this specific traffic, I need to send you down to any one of the devices that's now connected to the SSL orchestrator. So you still have all these devices. So you still have a firewall, you know, DLP, um, IDS, uh, you know, maybe you've got a WAF, maybe you've got a, uh, you know, antivirus uh, system or whatever. And so you have all these things still, but it's cool because the traffic can go to any one or all or you know do it however you want to, but you build the policy here on the SSL orchestrator, um, and you can based on the based on the classification of the traffic itself, you can send it to one or more or all or none or whatever you want to do, um, and so it really speeds things up that way. The uh, uh, a couple of things that I would note also about uh, the SSL orchestrator is that it can load balance across, let's say you have a bunch of these firewalls, you know, or a bunch of these data loss prevention or whatever. It can load balance across those so you're not having to, you know, buy the massive firewall. If you just need a little bit more capacity, you can just put a maybe a, a smaller, you know, version of a firewall on there and then just, boom, plug it right in and you're good to go. It also handles the monitoring and the health of each device so it knows exactly what's in play or not. And so if, you know, if something is completely offline, it will just not send traffic to that, but it can still send traffic to the rest of them rather than having, you know, up here, you've got all these crazy different scenarios of, of all the, you know, daisy chaining paths that, that you would have to take. A uh, couple other things that I would mention is things like um, uh, augmenting traffic on the fly. You can do that here on the SSL orchestrator because of, uh, because of I rules. I'll put, uh, Maybe I'll just put it right up here. I rules. All right. So this is our scripting language, and in fact, uh, we have I rules and I rules LX as well. So there's you can do a whole lot of stuff with I rules. So you can manipulate traffic on the wire here with the SSL orchestrator, whereas you may or may not be able to do that with this one kind of Uber device that you were looking at. Um, you can inject different headers here on the traffic with SSL orchestrator. Um, you can do port remapping here. So some of these don't allow. Like let's say you. Don't allow port 443 for what for whatever example or for whatever reason sslo can port remap from 443 to say 8443 uh, this can handle that kind of stuff um, it can be set up as an explicit or transparent proxy device uh, which by the way from the uh, you know from a from a topology standpoint this can be set up as a layer 2 device or a layer 3 inbound and outbound uh, so there's a lot of flexibility with how you can set this thing up um, and then I mentioned the, the health monitoring as well. And so, uh, so if one device fails, let's say your data loss prevention just totally goes offline. Had it gone offline up here, the whole chain would, have, would just be completely broken. If it goes offline down here, you're still sending traffic to all of the other devices. And uh, you know, while, you, while you would love to have the DLP online, it doesn't completely break the entire thing. So anyway, so for all those reasons, it's good to have you know, this, this centralized 
orchestration device that you can plug all of your other devices into. Um, so again, on the surface, it may look really cool to be like, hey, I got one device that can rule them all. But as you look a little deeper, there probably are issues with, uh, with going that direction. So, uh, so yeah, so I just encourage you to, to look at the specifics or some of the details of what's involved as you inspect your, uh, your traffic because you need to inspect your traffic. Like I said, 80, 80 plus percent is encrypted. You need to be looking at that stuff and this gives you a, a good way to do that. So, uh, so thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click up here on our DC ball and, uh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll see you guys out there in the community.